just love those. Uh... <laughs> What a cool piece. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we're digging today into a new piece for bass and piano called Melodies. It was written by Larry Wolf of the Boston Symphony for his former student, Steve Tramontosi of the San Francisco Symphony, and it's available for sale in our sheet music store. You can check out the link below. We're going to listen to the entire piece, hear from Steve and Larry about the piece. I'll go through and share my thoughts and also a tip for how you can make any melodic piece work better on the bass.
I decided to um, ask my uh, dear friend, Lawrence Wolf, who I also studied with at the New England Conservatory of Music, uh, who has become quite a composer in his own right, writing music for orchestra and chorus and uh, chamber music. And, and I said, Larry, just write me something for bass, a beautiful melody with a piano. And so he, wrote, he came up with melodies, which turned out to be a very incredibly haunting piece that has a, a, a real story to tell, very, very... Um, moving piece. So I'm very um, pleased that I could bring that music to life. If you're digging this so far, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and be sure to stick around to hear about how you can learn any piece more melodically. I was thinking to myself, why did I call it melodies? And simply because as I was starting it, I, I sort of, you want to have a working title. And melody sort of implied that I'll have a melody, a counter melody, and then I'll go back to the melody. And I just decided I have a few too many ideas, so let's just call it melodies, and see, and, and that leaves it open for me if I, I need just a snippet of something, a little. And and so it was just basically my my license to myself to to be a little less formal. Of course, I knew I was going to begin and end it with with the main tune, but what I did in the middle, whoa. <laughs> All right, let's dive into this wonderful recording from Steve Tramatozzi by Larry Wolf Melodies, and just check out this piece. So alrighty, the piano part just has this nice flow to it. And I was going through and trying to figure out like, what the heck time signature is this in? And uh, I was practicing just off the bass part and then I pulled out the piano score. So that's what I'm looking at right now. By the way, there is an orchestral tuning version and a solo tuning version, but the piano part is actually the same, which is a little bit unusual. Larry wanted to keep the tonality of the piece. These keys have certain feel, resonance to them. So if you play in orchestral tuning, which I'm doing, you are starting on the note B, and then Steve, I guess, is starting on the note A. I tried both, I think that's right anyway, I tried both versions, and honestly, it sits well on the bass in both keys, so just kind of a very cool thing. I just love the leaps in this piece. It sits so well. I... Just that writing, I've been trying as I've been learning this piece to keep it mostly on the D and the G string. You could do some, I started off kind of like crossing like, but I mean, the piece is called Melodies. Melodies, uh, starting on the A string, jumping over the G string. I think probably just doing it, something like that. Then, That seems to work pretty well for me. I would never know this is a 9-8 bar, unless I look at the score. This is very beautiful melodic line. This is off of Steve's great album, Home Bass. Definitely check it out. We've got a link in the description below. It's got a little bit of maybe a Hindemith vibe in some ways, and I mean, Larry is just, and it's got a little bit of a Glier vibe. I once composed something and played it for a friend of mine, and he said, that's really pleasant, which is basically the, 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 the mark, that's doom. <laughs> that, I was totally damned by that one. And so, I, and I realized it sounded pleasant because I was so busy trying not to sound like anyone, I didn't sound like anyone. And so I, I, I said, okay, the least I can do is pay homage to, to the to the great to, to the masters and if i sound a little bit like if i use a john williams chord here and i do and i have or a, a brahms trick here or a richard strauss trick there or a beethoven trick trick out trick is the, the meaning i don't mean trick but technique and if i by doing so by i discover by paying homage to the masters i discover i discover what i really like and then i discover that my voice whatever it is is going to be combination of examples or techniques from the masters just and, and and maybe by paying homage i might find a deeper voice in within myself as opposed to trying to avoid but i just love the the writing on this and just kind of guessing at the influences Yeah, and 
they're just, I mean, I just love those. Uh... That's one spot where I was experimenting with kind of staying in position just because my ears are still not trusting that leap up to the C natural yet. I had to get a few Hollywood chord techniques out of my, my, my out of my head, which was, you know, you just basically take a, a, a major chord and then just lower one note and all of a sudden it, it you, you haven't lost a tonality, but you've gained a, gained a bit of a, just a, a nudge of, of a different, different feel to it. All these fourths really remind me of Hidden Beth. Sacrilegious to play over Steve. Isn't that sound? There's like an inevitability that every interval. And I just love how he's developing the material. What a great piece for recital. What a great high moment. Yes. His vibrato is the way he shifts, the way he times his shift, all the things that the human voice does naturally. Steve does with his bow and, and his shifting naturally. I 
love that G resolution. I'm never expecting that. There. Let's see if I can uh, attempt that. And once you get that F interval in your in your mind, making that leap into F, no big deal at all. The, it's really just getting confident, in my opinion, with the intervals that Larry's laying out here and just listening to Steve's recordings. I could make something sound so painfully modern that you'd have to read the program notes to understand it. <laughs> but the fact is, everything I hear seems to have a key. Can't wait to actually play this piece in person with a pianist. keeping the thumb like on this on a harmonic something like that got to work on my intonation obviously so it sits well in this key obviously it's well in the key in the in the solo tuning version that Steve's playing uh, but works really well uh, in orchestral tuning also Okay, here's that tip for learning how to play more melodically in any piece. We have two options on the bass in general, either shift between notes or cross strings. For lyrical pieces like this Melodies piece by Larry Wolf or any melodic piece, think about shifting on the same string whenever possible. When people get started on the bass, it's really easy to kind of play note by note and not connect everything. I know I was guilty of that, but I really focused on it and worked hard and I developed the ability to connect notes better, whether it's in position or up and down one string. But if you can develop the skill of playing up and down one string and really making it sound vocal, like Steve's doing here, that's going to take you so far on the bass. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, the Wabase Institute of the Honeywell Arts Academy. They're accepting applications for their 2022 summer program. The deadline is February 15th. I think this program is so cool. I was there in 2021 and got to experience it in person. And it's such a unique program. It is a full scholarship Performance Institute. It fosters an inclusive, supportive environment where ideas are freely shared from teacher to student and vice versa. All programs at the Honeywell Arts Academy focus on fostering the human spirit by performing within the community to use music as a means to connect and heal. Eric Larson, Hal Robinson, Renan Meyer, congratulations on this long running program. Folks, get your application in by February 15th and I hope to see you there. If you want to learn more about new repertoire written for the bass, check out this video. We've got it linked up and we'll see you in the next one.